Operation Plowshare was a U.S. program to harness nuclear weapons for peaceful construction purposes. To that end, they planned to detonate many nuclear bombs in order to create artificial lakes or harbors, dig canals, and to even fracture shale oil deposits for gas extraction. If you're capable of rational thought, you would realize this plan was insane. However, this is not that Operation Plowshare. This is my 1976 GMC K25 plow truck, which is also at least a little bit insane. The reason the truck is built the way it is does need to be explained, as it has caused some mild controversy in the past. Since I've had this truck for quite a while, we'll have to look at some old pictures to get up to speed. I didn't have my own shop at this time, so it was a bit of a hobo. This is basically how it looked when I bought it. And if we zoom in over here, you can see one of the saddle tanks is out. That's because it had contaminated fuel and died the first time I tried to drive it. Here we can see why. The sender o-ring was pinched on installation, letting water in, and had been for long enough to leave a clear rust line on the pickup tube. Both tanks were like this. With the fuel contamination issue sorted, I moved to another shop. There I sold the box because I wanted to build a flat deck and sold the winter tires that were on it because they looked wimpy. At yet another place, I did what is basically the standard disc brake conversion on the 14 bolt rear, using front calipers and brackets from Rough Stuff, and I did a propane conversion for economics and off-camera performance, because I had ambitions of actually wheeling this thing. Then I welded up a steel flat deck and decked it with pressure-treated 2x6s. I think it looked quite decent, but apparently I didn't take many pictures. With a quick Krylon camel paint job rattled onto it and some new wheels and tires that had dread, it was actually looking like a truck. I also removed the hillbilly front bumper. There's more on replacing that later. Unfortunately, my own stupidity resulted in the 400 small block having some extremely accelerated wear. So I located a fresher 350 and a NV4500 to replace the Slushomatic TH350. Of course, I wanted to use an NP205 transfer case also, so I grabbed an adapter from AA and proceeded to hack off the main shaft and install a lock collar in lieu of the original nut. I wouldn't buy this kit again, as hacking bits off your transmission and effectively reducing it to a core might limit your options later. In a snap of the fingers, the new engine was in. And if you ever do a propane conversion, don't mount the regulator like that. It should be vertical, or for performance, you should mount it closer to or actually on the mixer. For installing the hydraulic clutch master, it was just as easy as putting a square pig in a round hole. Oh, that? Yeah, don't look at the wiring. We'll talk about that later. I wound up building the entire clutch pedal from scratch, basically, because I couldn't find one. The heavy load of a NP205 was stuck in, the exhaust was reworked, and then it was just a matter of fiddling with a twin stick shifter kit and the AA bracket to actually make it shift correctly. I remember this being extremely time consuming when it should have just bolted together. Like they say, aftermarket parts only fit the box they come in. I said I'd return to the front bumper, and sadly I didn't take many pictures. I started with making some attachment plates. Then a large piece of flat bar was broken into an angle, drilled for the pattern of an upright winch, and was tacked together. From there, diamond plate wings were also tacked on. Then it was all welded and painted black. At this point, the truck was relegated to only serving plow duty, as I just didn't have any other use for it. Nor had I time to continue trying to improve it, but at least it was finally in my own shop. Since the propane tanks had long run empty, and I wouldn't be able to fill them without driving the truck into town, you'll notice there's something a little special strapped into the passenger seat. Beside the glaring safety issue, the truck was just way too long to comfortably plow the tighter parts of my driveway. For maneuverability, it would need to be a lot shorter, like this. So I stripped the flat deck and propane saddle tanks off, then drilled all the rivets out of the rear suspension, and just rolled all of it forward. After a few new holes, some bolts, and cutting as much of the frame off as possible, I had this. From there I built a new cross member for the rear of the frame, and stitched the cut down deck back together. I threw some fresh SPF decking and paint on, and it actually looked fairly reasonable. Oh, and the wheelbase was now shorter than a K5 Blazer, at a mere 102 inches. Sometimes the snowbanks are just a little harder than you expect. Because of this, the last thing before kicking it back out to work 
It was I made a new plow mount that's stronger than the junk sold by K2, and that also brought the blade much closer to the truck. Speaking of K2, this is how well the blade will hold up once you reinforce the mount. It's always going to find the weakest point. It's been straightened a few times over the years because of this, but it's going downhill. Oh, I almost forgot. I was going to explain what was up with the wiring. The old harness caught fire and I rewired the whole truck from scratch. This was another learning experience, as it cost me a lot more time and money than anticipated. And actually sourcing connectors and pins was not very easy at the time. Hence the wires never got loomed up properly, or grommets installed around them, or really anything finished. It works, but it's an awful long way from pretty. That's the short backstory of this K25's history, as there will be some more videos featuring it in the future, and it's a rather unique piece of automotive hacktackery, I felt it deserved an explanation. Feel free to tell me how much you hate me for cutting up a perfectly good square body in the comments below, but I'll spoil it for you and admit the frame was actually bent before I cut it down. Thanks for watching, maybe check out some of my other videos that feature things that aren't as terrible as this. I have lots of Jeep stuff mostly. Some of it's actually kind of okay.